Shavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're reading from <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam. This is uh, Canto 4, Chapter 21, Text Number 21. I'll just recite the uh, Raja Uvacha. Raja Should we? No. Okay. I'll leave a gap so you can say it. Sabhyaha. Sabhyaha. Srinuta. Shri Nuta Madram Madram Vaha Vaha Sandhya Shri Nuta Sandhya Shri Nuta Madram Vaha That's too difficult. Alright, I'll just do it myself. Okay. Yashinuta Bhajram Vaha Sadavo Yahiha Gataha Satsu Chigna Subir Dharmam Abedyam Svamanishitam Translation King Fritu said Pardon, who said? Oh, gentle members of the assembly. May all good fortune be upon you. <laughs> May all of you great souls who have come to attend this meeting kindly hear my prayer attentively. A person who is actually inquisitive must present his decision before an assembly of noble souls. Support by the Divine Rest, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shri Prabhupada, Jai. In this verse, the word Sadavaha, all great souls, is very significant. When a person is very great and famous, many unscrupulous persons become his enemies. For envy is the nature of materialists. In any meeting there are different classes of men. And it is to be supposed, therefore, that because Prithu Maharaj was very great, 
he must have had several enemies present in the assembly. Although they could not express themselves. <coughs> Maharaj Pitu, however, was concerned with persons who were gentle. Therefore, he first addressed all the honest, all the honest persons, not caring for the envious. He did not, however, present himself as a royal authority. Who was empowered to command uh, to command everyone. For he wanted to present his statement in a humble submission before the assembly of great sages and saintly persons. As a great king of the entire world, he could have given them orders. But he was so humble and meek and honest that he presented this statement for approval. In order to clarify his mature decision. Everyone within the material world is conditioned by the modes of material nature. And therefore has four defects. But although Prithu Maharaj was above all these, still, like an ordinary conditioned soul, he presented his statements to the great souls, sages and saintly persons present there. Okay, so uh, I'm the only one in the temple at the moment, so somebody's come to the door, so I'll just be two minutes and I'll come back, okay? Sure.
Okay, sorry about that. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyananti Nashalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jaina Tasmai Shri Guru Venam Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Tvayam Rupa Kadamayam Elati Svabhadandikam Andeham Shri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Shakam Sri Rupam Sargajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Mutam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Prijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Mutamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrinda Vinishwari Vishavanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Anchkal Patra Bhischa Pipa Sindhu Vayavacha Patita Nam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namorum Vaishri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Vidadha Sri Vasudhi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So last last time I was giving class, we spoke about uh, Lord Indra and Prithu Maharaj. Prithu Maharaj was the king of the world. And uh, even though Indra is the king of heaven, that means he is a devotee, he still became envious of ritual morals. And therefore he tried to stop Ritu Maharaj from performing uh, the 100th Ashvamedha or sacrifice. Because if he'd have completed that, he would have been able to take, or he would have become eligible to take the post of Indra himself. So this is material, materialistic thinking. In the material world there is intense competition for everything. Um, just like children, if you put them into a room, you know, a few children and there's all different toys, they'll all start, you know, trying to, they may start fighting over the different toys. <laughs> But then when the mother or the father comes and takes, calls them in again, they have to leave the toys. So everybody in the material world is like that. They're trying to enjoy something 
for a very short period of time. Everything was there in the beginning, and now because they, now because uh, the living entities have come into the material world, they think it's theirs. Very in a very short time, who will be called in from this situation, and uh, everything will remain here, but we won't. We may even become president of Georgia. For a very short time. But at the time we're we're actually president, we think we're so important. But there are so many people uh, in history who've been through the same situation and no longer here. So devotional service means looking through the lens of knowledge. Seeing things in reality instead of in illusion. When we actually see things in reality, we become detached. Even though Indra is a devotee, He's trying to keep his material position. He doesn't realize that that's a gift from the Supreme Lord. A very, very important gift as well. And if he uses it properly, he can make fast spiritual progress. But if he uses it wrongly, it can be very dangerous. Just like this uh, human body is very, very special. And we can make so much spiritual progress. Oh, we can do so much damage <laughs> if we don't use it properly. So when Prabhupada was preaching in the when he first came to the West, he was preaching to everybody this point about you know we have a very special gift from the Lord. We should learn and teach society. We should use it ourselves and teach society how they can utilize this valuable gift also. 
I'm so in this past time, uh, Ritu Maharaj is now going to explain to his um, subjects, he's a king, to his subjects how to use the body properly. And he says that, you know, everything in this world is related to one another. He says even the relationship between a king and his subjects. He says it's a king's duty to ensure that all his subjects are engaged in their occupational duties. And so the king may think, that's not really important. It's more important that I become a famous king. This is the mentality of the leaders of today. Even Indra was thinking like that. But then, Ritu Maharaj had knowledge. So, you know, knowledge is very important in devotion service. If we don't have a proper understanding, we won't follow it properly, the process of devotion service. And so with, uh, with good knowledge, we have buddhi. Buddhi means spiritual intelligence. And this Buddha is coming from Krishna. Sarvashicharam Hridisani Vishto. Krishna's in the heart. Krishna And if we're serious about practicing devotional service, he'll give us direction and inspiration. <coughs> and that's uh, that uh, direction and inspiration will be confirmed by Shastra and the devotees. So if we're always serious about practicing devotional service, then Krishna will make sure we're always in knowledge. So Prithu Maharaj 
he realizes that actually if I don't guide my subjects I'll become responsible for misguiding them. And uh, I will get, as a reward, I will get one sixth of all the karma of my subjects, all the bad karma. So, you're very responsible position, a king. Uh, so therefore, he tells his subject, he uh, advises his subjects to do their prescribed duty, and then he keeps it. He keeps himself safe. The fact is that he from most of the stories that he shared with them, so well, what are the modern day leaders doing? They're just uh, following any advice which seems to actually be, which seems to make sense. And the result is everything becomes chaos. When we don't do our prescribed duties, then we get a reaction. What is that strength? Our muscle that trend uh, individually and collectively as a nation. So we're all experiencing some sinful reaction now in the result of the pandemic. Everybody's working out how to overcome it. But it's too, it's too late, <laughs> too late. The, the sinful activities have been performed, so now we have to undergo the reaction. And when, after a certain length of time, that reaction will have burnt out. <laughs> But a devotee is much more intelligent. A devotional service can be performed in any situation. As long as we try to perform it without attachment. So this is a great opportunity for a devotee to be detached. You know, our, our avenues of sense gratification have been stopped. 
We have no choices. <laughs> but we have one choice. Now we can use this time to actually become serious about our devotional practice. And that's the situation all the time. The, the reactions will come and go. But we, we, all, we, all, we always have the facility or option to tolerate those things and carry on with devotional service. So when Pitu Maharaj had told his subjects to follow their prescribed duties, he then started giving more information. He started talking about the Brahmins and Vaishnavas. And he said the Brahmins and Vaishnavas are the only subjects I have who I don't have control of. Their, their leader is Krishna. If we're very serious about devotional service, then Krishna will take care of all our needs. He says, so the Vaishnavas and Brahmins are very dear to the Supreme Lord. For two reasons. Well, actually for many reasons, but two, two very prominent ones. And one is that we, the devotee practices uh, loving service to the Lord. And by doing that, the second, the second point is that he sets the example for society to follow. And this is the only cure for the difficulties of material life, to follow the guidance of a, a devotee. Krishna actually says in Bhagavad Gita, there's nobody more dear to me than one who uh, shares this knowledge with others. So in this way, a devotee is very liberal. 
He receives transcendental knowledge and gives transcendental knowledge. Um, <clears throat> so he's advising his, stu his uh, citizens not just to perform their prescribed duties, but to, all, to but to, with the aim of engaging in devotional service. And uh, it says that a devotee, well, once we actually render loving service to the Supreme Lord, then actually, even if we don't complete the course, we may fall away. We don't suffer like an ordinary materialistic person. So, uh, devotees in a very auspicious condition of life. Whatever external conditions we may find ourselves in, we always have the facility or the uh, option of rendering devotional service to Krishna. And this is available for everybody. What did Lord Nishinanda say? He was he sang the song called Dalela Gita about he's the uh, he's a broker who sells the holy name. And he said, "What is the price of the holy name? What is the price of this?" process of devotional service. And uh, the reply was the sincere desire to have it. So where does this sincere desire come from? Says Shushrasha Shradhanasya Vasudeva Kitaruchi Shan Mahatseva Vipra Punyatya Nishevana. It says by rendering service to the devotees. Especially Shura Prabhupada. If we help him to push on this movement, then we get Prabhupada's blessings. There's a story of uh, George Harrison. He, for many years he was writing devotional songs and publishing them and uh, selling them to the public. 
Why? Because Prabhupada asked him to do that. Because actually he wanted to join the temple. He said, should I join the temple? The no, Prabhupada said, no, you don't have to join the temple. He says, you just use your occupational duty in the service of the Lord. And so Prabhupada told him how, what mood to write the songs in and uh, everything he needed to know. And so George Harrison followed his advice. In the beginning, he was hoping, when he was first asked to do this, I believe the Beatles were actually a group at that time. And uh, I think, anyway, but if eventually they didn't remain as a group, but they became separate artists. So that was a big setback for George Ellison. That was a big setback, a big obstacle. He no longer had the the label, you know. If if he wrote songs and published them under the Beatles uh, label, they would have sold. But now he was alone. So he started writing them under his own name. So he didn't let the, this, this was a big obstacle and he didn't let it get in the way. You know, this, this world is a place, it's called Obstacle Loka. And so we have to follow his, his uh, example. There may be so many obstacles in devotional service. But it, we should actually uh, see how we can negotiate them and carry on with our service. These obstacles are... When obstacles are presented, this is a great opportunity to make advancement. 
We get great determination to serve Krishna by doing that. And Krishna, and Krishna gives us spiritual realization. Uh, so this is called pretty purvaka. We serve Krishna even though it may be difficult. And uh, what's he say? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I say uh, <coughs> many years later, I think it was around 2001. Uh, George Harrison, he, he contacted cancer. And uh, there was an interview with his wife, one of the devotees interviewed his wife after George Harrison left this world. He said, and she was by his side in the, in, in the uh, hospital or in the, by his bed. He says, and when he left this world, the whole room just lit up like somebody had switched a light on. And at that time the devotees went to give him association. There was uh, Shama Sunda, Guru Das. And so it was a very uh, auspicious, uh, very auspicious situation that he left his body in. So why am I mentioning George Harrison? Because he never got much, he got Prabhupada's association for a, a very short time and then for 20 or 30 years he practiced alone. But because he tried to please Prabhupada and follow his instructions, uh, he was actually given the strength to do that. So we should always try to, uh, so even though we may not get as much association as we would like, Still, it doesn't mean to say we can't be successful. Uh, 
In fact, when Prabhupada was leaving his body, um, there was all the devotees gathered round. Prabhupada could, couldn't get up because he was so weak. Uh, but he, he lifted his hand up and, he, and with his other hand he took he took his ring off. Pardon, he took his ring off? He himself? Took his ring off. You know, a ring that goes on the finger. Yes, and, I, I, uh, and then he gave it to Tamakrishna Goswami. And he said, uh, give this ring to George. So, you know, by pleasing Krishna's pure devotee, all obstacles in devotional service can be overcome. So whatever is our natural propensity, our natural inclination, we should try our best to use it to, to satisfy the Supreme Lord. You know, success in devotional service is not based on, uh, you know, understanding uh, by uh, it, by chanting. Um, what is it by? Uh, uh, hearing and chanting. Becoming a great scholar. Becoming a great scholar. And or um, distributing many books. It's dependent, it's solely dependent on if Krishna is pleased with us. You know, Krishna knows our situation. And so we should try and our best in that situation. And the, and the best thing is to try and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra very, very nicely for 16 rounds. That should be our, our primary occupational duty. Then everything becomes possible. So Prithu Maharaj is telling his subjects ultimately to listen to good advice from the Brahmins and Vaishnavas. By pleasing the Vaishnavas, we, the, the doors to the Kingdom of God becomes open. Uh, 
So we can all please Srila Prabhupada by following his instructions. Sixteen rounds, four regular different principles. And, uh, try to help the devotees to give Krishna consciousness to others. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Antara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Ora Premanandi. Hari Hari So, um, is there any comments or any questions? There is a question. Hare Krishna. Uh, the question is how can we um, tell whether Prabhupada is satisfied with, with our service? This is how well, the is asking. Well, if we try to follow the instructions to the best of our ability, uh, we can. Uh, we can actually um, understand that we're doing the right thing. And we can ask the devotees uh, who are actually uh, strongly practicing devotional service, uh, how we can actually do, you know, if there's any service we, we can do in our spare time. You know, if you read Prabhupada's books every day, we can understand what pleases him. We have to we're, you know, we're just a small group of devotees in Tbilisi, mostly living in family life. So we have to work together as a one unit, if possible. We all have some particular expertise which we can use in Krishna's service. And even if all we can do is practice the process, and that will please Prabhupada. We can ask the, we can also uh, ask the temple uh, leaders, the ones the temple leaders, if uh, there's any particular service that they would, uh, that we could actually do for the temple.
Okay, 